session, we'll be looking at the role that universities and other educational institutions can have in promoting peace and using technology for that purpose. Um, we have agreed, as part of a panel, that we're going to structure our morning time here so that each of us have about three to five minutes uh, to give a statement and then open the floor to some conversation and dialogue. And uh, we've all agreed that we will try to live with that. I know that on the panel there are people who have the perspective of a rabbit and some who have the perspective of a duck, but uh, we also have the care of the time and lunches at one, so we uh, will not be able to uh, drag this out too long. I will begin. I'm uh, Lowell Ebert, Director of Peace and Conflict Studies at the University of Waterloo in uh, Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. For anyone who knows of the University of Waterloo, oftentimes one thinks about technology, computer science, engineering, computer software. We also have a Peace Studies program that teaches around 1,200 students per year. We offer about 16 courses, have about 140 students who are majoring or minoring in Peace Studies. And uh, we only offer a bachelor's degree in Peace Studies at this point. We're hoping to get a master's degree sometime, but that has not happened yet. We've been intrigued by the power of the potential peace network and how it can increase the effectiveness and reach of our program. And I'll simply throw out six different ways that we're considering and looking into ways that the Power of Peace Network can benefit our program. And I'll just go through these very quickly and we can talk more about this uh, in the question time or later this afternoon. The first way that we see the Power of Peace Network being available to improve or enhance the impact of our program is through offering students the option to do digital assignments. We're starting that this fall for the first time. Uh, the first assignments we're not quite ready to profile here at this conference, but we have a group of students who are doing that for the first time. And they're sharing back with us, telling us that this was very effective, the new way of, new, of using medium to actually complete a, an academic assignment and yet uh, make it accessible to others. Number two, we would like to encourage our students to work on some of their assignments together with students from other parts of the world to actually collaborate to offer um, um, collaboratively new assignments. We don't know how to do that yet, but it's clearly something that uh, we have agreed to in principle and would like to actually explore how that might be done. Three, we, our university has agreed that uh, we are ready to make available our distance education courses free online to anyone to use, borrow, to adapt, to edit. Um, we only have one course like this so far, and I uploaded it this morning at 7 o'clock on the Power Peace Network. So if you want to take an example of, or look at an example of what that might look like, we do have one course like that now, and we'd like to continue that. Number four, we would really enjoy working with other universities to collaboratively develop courses like this so that other universities would put their courses online as well. We can borrow, we can learn, and through that process of mutual uh, cross-fertilization, all of our programs uh, become deeper and uh, take the uh, cross-cultural perspectives more seriously. Five, we would actually like to uh, explore whether it's possible to jointly teach a course with another university in real time in another place in the world a course on an issue like uh, climate change and peace or environmentalism and peace or something like that to actually offer it at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning Toronto time uh, which might be 3 o'clock in the afternoon Uganda time and actually offer the course together with another university co-teach it with uh, digital technology and lastly we'd like to explore whether the Power Peace Network can be useful in uh, collaborative peace research we think there's potential we don't exactly know how to do it um, but we think there's potential. So these are some things that we're thinking about at the University of Waterloo and what we'd clearly like to have uh, conversations with uh, others of similar interests. At this point, I'd like to uh, turn the discussion over to some of our other panelists here and I'd like to start with uh, uh, Professor Boonler Tsupakalaki, Loki, who is the chairman of the Graduate Program of Communication at Bangkok University to uh, offer some preliminary comments. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and also students. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, UNESCO for highly inviting me on 
this uh, panel. And I think I would I also appreciate the, this global uh, conference. I think we come to Thailand at the right time because, uh, as you know, we have been facing a lot of uh, issues and conflict, which I hope that we will bring back peace, a sustainable peace in Thailand. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, clarify also the concept of peace within the Thai context. Um, yesterday, we have a pretty Sanchez Yasu. She came and she tried to explain that by the term of peace, sometimes we use uh, another term like a tranquility, but it means that it's a peace and happiness. Uh, so we do believe that peace exists in the inner part of the people. That's what we call the mind, the mind of the people. So our region, for example, Buddhism, we emphasize what we call meditation, meditation, breathing, a bit of family, and also concentration, plus uh, non-violence or ahimsa. So uh, we do believe in this. And definitely, we cannot isolate this from other issue in our society. Uh, so as uh, I have been with the university uh, for all of my life, both as student and also I have been teaching mostly generation and communication of community as I did know. So I have a full of a faith in education. I have a faith at the university. And I believe that the university can provide a leadership in peace. So, saying that, I would like to highlight uh, the ways that the uh, university can act as uh, a leader or catalyst in this education. There are, number, there are a number of ways, but with time limited, I would like to highlight what it is. So, the first area that the uh, jury can do is, as you know, education, training, and learning, orientation whatsoever. As uh, the chairman says, I have been teaching journalism and we try to introduce the cost to the like what we call case journalism, citizen journalism. I think this is essential, especially in Thailand. The Thai people are very polite by nature. They are, they are intellectual, but they are shy to speak. And <laughs> they are not also critical thinking because we don't think by broad memory. So, what happened, you know, we cannot play the media when. The media in Thailand, they, they tend to be sensationalized. So when there is a, a, a crisis, a conflict, that's what happened here before. The red shirt and the right and at the yellow shirt on front page. So we have a live telecast by the media, that's right. So the media tend to sensationalize or tend to fuel the conflicts instead of resolving or containing the conflict. So I think it's important that we have to provide the right education at the university, at both undergraduate and graduate level. So we need a kind of building. This is a, a pressing need for the correct study of journalism. Uh, journalism, but in Thailand, most of it we know as communication arts, are the most popular subjects. It has been introduced to every university, private and school. So I, I do believe that if we have a direct uh, way to target our young people, you, especially students, this is the right thing that we have to do through the university. Uh, apart from education program, we also have a, like a media literacy, or like uh, some other thing that we like, kind of think of. And the second area, very intelligent one I want to suggest is that it's a research. We have done a lot of research, as we try to student, in a related area like a human rights, right to public care, and uh, a lot of climate change and some sustainable social change, something like that. That we involve students was a graduate student, and they did a lot of to a research during the crisis. The measure and has, but they have they, they, probably many about the country, but they don't know how to solve the country. So a lot of cases, a lot of research of ideas that we, we have done during the period. The last area, this is the chairman, that I think we can collaborate at the university, is what you call now PBN, Power Peace Network. I do believe, I appreciate this concept. Because it is really a public opinion that is important. It's true that information is not based on knowledge. But through information, we want to know the truth. 
and it should be based on the right information. If the right information is true, that's what we can have a sound, public opinion. So that public opinion, if we can create through the youth or the young, there will be a pressure. There will be a pressure uh, that uh, probably connected, but uh, through the website or through many uh, uh, ICT. Our students, my students are okay out here. They are quite advanced in technology. But they are, but our website, you know, they, they, they don't mention the keys mostly. So what is we need is, is, is a content. So we need to create a content related to, to keys. And then we, we can show and we can connect over the time. So thank you for the